Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we are going to compare the Samsung Galaxy A73 5G with the Samsung Galaxy S21 Fan Edition. Like the previous comparisons, this one is going to be an in-depth comparison which means this is going to be a long video. Before I start, I have a humble request that please subscribe and help me cross 100k subscribers. Also the like target for this video is just 5000 likes, so do like it if you find it good enough at some point. Alright, let's start it off by comparing uh, the design and the build of both the phones. Both phones are built out of plastic but Samsung has set some boundaries between its premium mid-range and sub-flagship devices. For example, the Samsung A73 doesn't have a super soft finish at its back and it doesn't feel very premium in the hand. Samsung has used a plastic frame on this phone and it weighs at about 181 grams, slightly heavier than the S21 Fan Edition. The S21 FE on the other hand has a very soft feel at its back and it has got a very premium feel as well. S21 Fan Edition has an aluminium frame and it weighs at about 177 grams. Surprisingly, the A73 is thinner than the S21 Fan Edition, both phones lack a headphone jack but the A73 has this advantage of micro SD card slot to expand the storage. Samsung has used the IP67 certification on the A73 while the S21 FE uses IP68 rating. S21 FE follows the design language of the Galaxy S21 lineup while the A73 has the typical Samsung mid-range design. Both phones look good but if I have to pick one for the overall build quality and the looks, I'll probably go with the S21 FE. Both phones have dual stereo speakers, I have thoroughly tested the speakers and I did not find any difference between the sound output of these phones. With this we can now move towards the displays of these handsets. First of all, the A73 has a larger 6.7 inches screen compared to the 6.4 inches screen of the S21 FE. On the A73 we get a Super AMOLED Plus screen while on the S21 FE we get the Dynamic AMOLED screen. Brightness nets on both sides are 800 nits and both phones have a refresh rate of 120Hz. Samsung has used the Gorilla Glass 5 on the screen of the A73 and Gorilla Glass Victus is used on the screen of the S21 FE. A73 has slightly bigger bezels and bottom chin compared to the S21 FE but even then the A73's display doesn't look bad. Samsung has improved the display a lot this year by cutting down those bezels and the bottom chin of the A73. You can't really figure out the differences between these displays while using them in your daily routine. The Dynamic AMOLED on the S21 FE was supposed to have variable refresh rate but unfortunately the S21 FE doesn't have that. I am not sure why Samsung used the Dynamic AMOLED in this phone if it had to keep the variable refresh rate away. Both screens support HDR10+, the overall color quality, contrast, saturation on both sides and the outdoor visibility is also similar. Both phones have a fingerprint scanner underneath their screens and it works pretty well on both the sides. I found it a little more responsive on the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. You do get the Face ID unlock options on both the sides too. Haptic feedback is one of my main concerns whenever I get my hands on a new Samsung Galaxy phone. I was very impressed by the quality of haptic feedback on the S21 FE. It's clicky and responsive but unfortunately the A73's haptic feedback is far from good. Samsung needs to improve the haptic feedback on its mid-range devices. Let's quickly compare the software on both the sides. Both these phones run on the Android 12 One UI 4.1 out of the box. Apparently the UI uh, software features are the same on both the sides. But once you dig deep, you find out that the S21 FE brings a full flagship one UI experience while the A73 lacks a lot of good features. On the S21 FE you get features like the Samsung wireless text, it's got the wireless and reverse wireless charging, its camera app is rich of features like raw format for the photos, the ability to capture uh, 60 frames per second videos in 4K and more. I know some of these are hardware related features but when we look at the Samsung Galaxy A73, it seems like a super inferior device in terms of the software features. It doesn't have any of the features that I just mentioned. However, it's really good to see Samsung bringing a premium feature like the object eraser to its mid-range series this year. Another good thing about both these devices is the software update lifecycle. Both these phones are eligible for Samsung's 4 years of Android and 5 years of security updates. The S21 FE is clearly ahead in the software department too. In terms of the performance and chipset, the A73 brings a mediocre Snapdragon 778G 6nm chipset 
versus the flagship Exynos 2100 5nm chipset of the S21 FE. On the A73, we get the UFS 2.1 storage and the LP DDR4 RAM versus the UFS 3.1 storage and DDR5 RAM of the S21 FE. Now, this is a huge difference and this is going to reflect in the benchmark and speed test that I am about to show you. Let's take a look at the Intuitu benchmark score at first. Here's the Intuitu benchmark storage test score on your screen. The S21 FE is ahead as expected. The Geekbench 5 scores are on your screen now and lastly we have the detailed 3D Mark Gaming Benchmark test scores on the screen. Let's do a quick speed test between these devices. No apps are running on these phones right now and I am going to launch some stock applications starting from the phone app. You guys can observe this test closely and drop your own feedback in the comments. I would refrain from commenting on this part of the speed test because I personally do not find this app opening speed test very logical. I just add it to the videos for those specifically asking for this kind of test. Watch and enjoy this part and I'll catch you with the more logical part of the speed test in a while. Okay, so let's now try to make some real sense out of the speed test. I am going to edit two same 4K video clips on both the phones. First in the Premiere Rush application, I'll apply the same effects on both sides and then I'll export the clip into a 1080p clip. Let's see which phone renders it faster. The S21 FE easily wins this one. The phone did not let the A73 stand a chance here. I'll do the same in the Viva video application now. I'll select same clips on both sides and I'll apply a same effect or filter on both the sides once again. This time I'll export it into a 720p clip and let's see which phone does it faster. The S21 FE caught up just in time. And now I'll edit a same 108 megapixels image on both the sides in the Lightroom application. I'll apply the uh, same auto tune on both sides and save this image to the device. The 
S21 FE wins here by a very slight margin. Lastly, I'll edit a same image uh, on both the phones in the Snapseed app by applying a same effect once again. Let's see which phone wins this one. And this one also uh, goes towards the S21 Fan Edition. And that, my friends, was our speed test. The A73 cannot beat the S21 Fan Edition. Let's now check the RAM management as well. I'll reopen some of my recently launched apps one by one to see what happens. It looks like both phones have a similar RAM management. Both phones killed some of the applications and launched some of the applications from the same place. There isn't a real difference here. Before I talk about the cameras of these phones, I would like to talk about uh, the batteries. In the A73, we get a big 5000 mAh battery. The phone is big and it can accommodate that kind of battery. The S21 FE brings a 4500 mAh battery. Both phones support 25W fast charging and none of these bring a charger out of the box. I expect the Samsung Galaxy A73's battery to last longer, a little over a day while the S21 FE can easily give you a screen on time of nearly 7 hours. It depends on your usage. I have a full battery rain test planned and that will come out soon. So make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned to find out the results. Let's move on to the cameras now. The A73 brings a main 108 megapixel Samsung HM6 sensor. The rest of its camera details are on the screen. The S21 FE brings a main Samsung S5 K2L 12 megapixel sensor and its other camera details are on your screen. As far as the camera apps are concerned, like I said previously, the S21 FE's camera app is miles ahead in terms of features. The S21 FE has all the features that you will find in the A73, but let me tell you about the features that you won't find in the A73. The S21 FE can record videos up to 4K at 60 frames per second from both its front and rear cameras. It can capture pro mode photos in raw format. The phone can capture 3x portraits because it's got a telephoto lens. It's got the portrait video mode and dual recording mode too. And super slow mode on the S21 FE can automatically detect and capture the motion. These are all the things you won't find on the A73. Let's take a look at the camera sample starting off with the front camera videos. Hi guys, uh, so this is a front camera comparison between the A73 and the S21 Fan Edition 5G. Uh, this video is being recorded in 60 frames per second. The 1080p resolution is being used. I find the S21 Fan Edition's camera a little bit cropped in. For the resolution, colors, contrast and other elements, you guys have to be the judge. I am walking in the face of the sun to give you guys a better idea about the color composition and other aspects, especially the dynamic range in uh, the front camera videos. Make sure that you guys drop your detailed analysis about these front camera videos and also about the voice recording quality of this mic in the comment section down below. I'll show you the 4K uh, at 30 frames per second front camera video after this. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one now. Okay, this is now a 4K at 30 frames per second from the front camera of this phone. Uh, the S21 Fan Edition can also do 4K at 60 frames per second from its front camera, but I am not going to show you that in this video because this comparison is all about the common modes. But if you are interested in seeing the 4K at 60 frames per second front camera samples of the S21 Fan Edition, you can uh, check out my full camera review of this phone. I have uh, covered all the video modes and all the resolution options in that video. And for now, once again, let me know uh, which phone's front camera video are you guys finding better, which phone's voice recording quality is better. On this small screen, the S21 Fan Edition looks far ahead of the A73, but I would like to hear you out as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rear camera samples of these phones now. Okay, this one now is a 1080p at 30 frames per second ultra wide video on the screen. In the videos, you will find the saturation high on the A73. The stability is much better on the S21 FE. Samsung still needs to work on fixing the stabilization in the mid-range devices. The OIS in these mid-range phones is a mere gimmick.
in the 60 fps mode you will find the stabilization of the a73 getting horrible while the s21 fe keeps it very sweet i had these phones mounted on the same tripod and i am walking in these videos to give you guys a better idea about the stabilization In the 4K at 30 frames per second ultra wide mode, the stabilization of the S21 FE is much better once again, and saturation on the S73 is high. Especially if you look at the floor, you will find it kind of wet on the S73, while it is uh, a little yellowish on the S21 FE. The overall resolution of the video is pretty good on both the phones. Watch these clips, and I'll catch you guys with the rear camera images in a bit. Take a look at this ultra wide image first of all the image of the a73 has an overall pale look with a very warm tone the s21 fe's image has a cool color tone and doesn't have too dark shadows the saturation is high in the image of the a73 details are much better on the s21 fe because the saturation is high in the image of the a73 my shirt's yellow color on it looks more punchy here's a normal image from both the phones once again the saturation on the a73 is too high S21 FE uh, this time has a pale image but details are high on the S21 FE the sharpness seems so high on the A73 that its image has a little bit of noise too my shirt's original color is being maintained well on the S21 FE the A73 doesn't look too bad this one is a 108 megapixel image from the A73 and a normal image from the S21 FE because we don't have any high res mode on the S21 FE you can see that the 108 megapixels mode of the A73 is not very practical as it has completely blown off the sky the dynamic range is too poor and shadows are too dark the purpose of showing this particular image is to prove that the 108 megapixels camera of the A73 does not have any advantage over the 12 megapixels camera of the S21 FE this is a portrait image and now the image from the A73 is too sharp again and highly saturated. Look at the background too, you can see a little bit of uh, the blue sky on the S21 FE and the sky is whitewashed on the A73. Details are also better on the S21 FE as they are intact because of soft overall touch. Edge detection is equally good on both the sides. Here's another ultra wide image. You can see that once again the A73 has a pale image and it looks a little dull too. I would pick up the S21 FE's image for its overall better color composition and not a yellowish look. 
Here's a normal image and as we are moving towards a broad daylight, the images of the S21 FE start picking up some saturation which looks quite good too and the A73 starts producing a warmer color tone. This one is a 3x zoom image from both sides and uh, do I need to tell you guys that the S21 FE is far ahead because it's got a telephoto lens. Here's another set of ultra wide and normal images. In this ultra wide image, I find the saturation high on the S21 FE. Details in the ultra wide image of the S21 FE are better again. Shadows on the A73 are too dark. The same goes for this normal image. Look at the grey color of the building. It looks better on the S21 FE because of a good amount of saturation. And this one is a 3x image. A73's image has poor details and it's an over sharpened image with a lot of noise. The S21 FE's telephoto camera speaks for itself. A 10x image and again the S21 FE is miles ahead here. Let me show you another ultra wide uh, image. Look at the color of the grass here, clear difference on both sides and by the way, the A73 looks better in this image because the grass has to look greener. This one is a normal image and I am finding it better on the S21 FE in terms of the details. The A73 is taking good images but certainly not as good as the S21 FE. Now take a look at this image. I am highly disappointed in the Samsung Galaxy A73 for this one. I am not sure what this phone has done, but it wasn't supposed to take an image like this. In all the images that I am about to show you now, you will find a better depth effect on the S21 FE. The details and overall colors and contrast will also look better on the S21 FE. The A73 also has a nice depth effect and it once again tries to add more saturation to the images at some instances which makes its images look pinkish at times. But if you want a more close to reality and polished look in the images, I think the S21 FE will have to be your choice. The greenery looks amazing in the images of the S21 FE, it does not fade elements in the images like the A73 does. S21 FE is doing what a flagship camera does. Samsung should improve the camera of the A73 to bridge uh, this much of gap between the A73 and a sub-flagship device. The A73's camera definitely deserves to be improved. You will now see some indoor images and in all these images you will find the saturation high on the A73 which makes its images look better at times. This is because the new 108 megapixel sensor performs good in the low light conditions. I can't outrightly say that the A73's camera is bad. I am finding all these issues in its camera because today I have put it next to a very powerful flagship grade camera and Samsung has to set some boundaries between a mid-range and a sub-flagship device. The colors are definitely look better in the images of the S21 FE and details on the S21 FE are better too. Observe these images and I'll catch you guys with the low light and night mode images in a while. Galaxy A73's low light and night mode uh, photography performance is impressive. First of all, it maintains the same level of saturation that it had in the previous images. It tries to keep the details intact but since the S21 FE has better image processing, it manages to keep uh, elements more detailed than the Samsung Galaxy A73. The S21 FE's night mode images have a warm tone and on the A73 we get that slightly pinkish look because of its high saturation. The S21 FE is definitely a superior device here and I think the A73 gives it a tough competition. Let's take a look at the selfies. I have taken a lot of selfies in the wide and close angles, in broad daylight and also in extremely low light. In the broad daylight selfies you will find the saturation very high on the A73. To me the details look better on the A73. The image of the S21 FE lacks that vibrance in the front camera images. I think it's trying to keep the images too close to reality. It should have added a little bit of saturation and increased the overall contrast. Even when I zoom in, I find the selfies of the A73 on a much better side. Look at the color of my shirt in this portrait selfie. It looks brighter in the A73. The exposure on the A73 seems to be high as compared to the S21 FE. Details once again are better on the A73 and I find the A73's images softer too. Furthermore, the edge detection on the A73 also looks good. 
it's really good to have such a good front camera on the A73. I am happy that there is at least one department where the Samsung Galaxy A73 outperforms the Galaxy S21 FE. But when it comes to the selfies, it's more of a subjective choice. Some users like a more natural look with no retouching at all and some users prefer a little bit of beautification in their selfies. In these selfies, the beauty effect on both the phones is at the same level and this is what you are supposed to get out of the box on both sides. I do find the background a little washed out in some images of the A73 and my shirt continuously looks brighter on the A73 but these effects are making the A73's images look more lively. The indoor selfie of the A73 looks pale again and here the S21 FE takes a lead because it doesn't have that greenish or the pale effect. Both phones take very nice uh, night mode selfies too. Do let me know about your own analysis and thoughts on all these selfies. And with this we reach the conclusion. This is the kind of the conclusion where I wouldn't want to break it down into specific points. The S21 FE is way ahead of the Samsung Galaxy A73 in almost all the aspects. Be it the display, the performance, the overall build quality and protection. The cameras of the S21 FE are also better. The S21 FE just sweeps it. In some countries, the price gap between the S21 FE and the A73 isn't huge. For example, the base price of the A73 is 550 US dollars and the S21 FE is available for 599 US dollars. For only 50 extra dollars, you can get a flagship grade device with almost everything better on board. So if you have the same price gap between these two devices in your country, close your eyes and go ahead and pick up the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. If the price gap is huge in your country and the S21 FE is far away from your budget, go ahead and pick up the Galaxy A73. You won't dislike this device either. In the end, the choice is yours. Let me know which device you like more in this comparison. Drop your feedback about this video too. Subscribe and like if you haven't done that already. With that being said, I will sign off and see you all in the next one.